That's it. Android fans have waited a long time for a tablet to call their own, spending most of 2010 watching the iPad dominate the tablet market. But with the Samsung Galaxy Tab, we finally have the first serious alternative to Apple's tablet. Despite Steve Jobs' claims to the contrary, 7 inches is a perfectly viable size for a tablet computer. The tab is about half the size of an iPad, weighing in at just under a pound, it's very comfortable weight. Its edges aren't quite as beveled as the iPads, but at less than half an inch thick, the plastic chassis is more than comfortable to hold in one hand while reading an ebook or browsing a website. The tab's 7 inch screen size looks small when you're accustomed to larger screens, but there's actually plenty of pixel real estate in its 1024 by 600 resolution LCD. Viewing angles are among the clearest I've seen for a TFT display, though it's not quite as bright or vivid as the iPad's IPS panel. The Galaxy Tab's bezel is also thinner than the iPad, which works both for and against the tablet's design. I found it easy to grip the tab by its side while using it in the portrait orientation, though I found it too easy to accidentally brush the capacitive touch buttons when holding the tab in landscape position. Physical buttons would have been a much better design decision. The placement of the power button on the right side of the tab also felt awkward, but that's something I got used to over time. I also like that the micro SD and SIM card slots are easily accessible on the right side of the tab. One notable other benefit of the Galaxy Tab size is how easy it is to type on. Thumb typing in the portrait position with two hands is quite frankly the best typing experience I've ever had. The virtual keys are big enough so that you can be fast and accurate, but your thumbs don't have to stretch to hit the center keys like on the iPad. Swipe keyboard software is also bundled here, which I prefer to use when typing with just one hand. From a physical design standpoint, I think Samsung got most things right with the Galaxy Tab, though there is definitely room for improvement. For example, I don't mind if there's no HDMI port for video out, but I would have preferred that Samsung use a micro USB port for charging and syncing rather than this obscure 30 pin connector. So what about performance? Again, I'm sorry to report that while the Samsung Galaxy Tab gets many things right, it really falls short in some key areas. Web browsing, which is arguably the most important task for a tablet, is a disappointment. Using the default web browser, pages took about twice as long to load as on the iPad, while scrolling and zooming were noticeably stuttery. This is surprising given that the Galaxy Tab is powered by a 1 GHz Cortex-A8 ARM processor and has 512 megabytes of RAM. Surfing with a third-party browser like Opera Mobile or Dolphin Browser HD is an improved experience, but still not what I would call smooth. And yes, while the Galaxy Tab supports Flash, Hulu is blocked and Flash video playback is painfully slow. Speaking of video playback, the Galaxy Tab handles 720p video encoded with H.264 very well. Video at lower resolution can be stretched to fill the screen, though HD content makes the most out of the tab's 16x9 aspect ratio. YouTube videos, unfortunately, don't stream in high definition. The included YouTube app maxes out at high quality video setting, which doesn't look that great. App compatibility was another concern of mine when I first got the Galaxy Tab, since most Android apps aren't developed for the tab's screen size and resolution. So I'm happy to report that app scaling performed much better than I expected, with a variety of popular apps. In fact, I prefer Android's smart scaling algorithm to iOS's pixel doubler method. Essential apps like Twitter, Pandora, and Angry Birds all filled up the screen with little to no pixelation. Text renders at native resolution so you don't see any unsightly stretching. It's still not an ideal situation for every single app, and I do look forward to apps designed for this specific form factor. Samsung's own TouchWiz apps are good examples of apps designed for the 7-inch form factor. The email, calendar, and contacts apps are better than what you'll find on stock Android phones, though I did find myself going back to the Gmail app which includes missing features like mass message deletion. Samsung also includes a media hub for renting or buying DRM-protected movies and TV shows, which is nice. Our T-Mobile version of the tab also came with some extra crapware, but these are easily uninstalled or hidden away. There's a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera and a 3.2 megapixel LED flash equipped camera on the back of the device. Taking photos with such a big screen was pretty novel. I felt like I was holding up a picture frame to literally frame my shots. The big viewfinder would be perfect for tap to focus, but unfortunately that feature is absent, as is a dedicated camera button. Image quality is on par with other 3 megapixel camera phones, but low light performance is quite poor. 
I do appreciate the inclusion of exposure and color balance settings though. I also found that the Tab's 1.3 megapixel front facing camera to be mostly useless. The image quality is mediocre and the included quick video calling app is only compatible with a few Android phone models at the moment, making it even more useless than Apple's FaceTime. You can shoot video with both cameras, though neither will shoot in HD. The rear camera actually maxes out at 720 by 480 resolution, though videos I shot were smooth and good enough for YouTube. Since the Galaxy Tab is smaller than the iPad, the non-replaceable battery is smaller too. I was able to get two days of regular use on the Tab, with Wi-Fi turned on, using it for web browsing, ebook reading, and music playback, both locally and over streaming services. With full screen video playing non-stop at medium brightness, the Tab actually lasted under six hours, which is not quite as impressive as the 15 hours of video playback we achieved in our iPad battery rundown. Standby time is actually where the Tab really falls short. You have to watch out for idle apps running in the background and the dormant 3G connection when the Tab isn't in use. If you don't turn off push notifications and 3G, the Tab won't even last a weekend in your backpack when you're not even actively using it. While the Galaxy Tab is certainly usable and feels like a polished device, its faults really lie in the software more than the hardware. Slow web browsing performance and short standby battery life shows that Android 2.2 Froyo isn't ready to be a tablet OS, and at $400 on contract or $600 without, it's only slightly cheaper than the 16GB iPad 3G. I can't recommend the Galaxy Tab as a viable alternative to the iPad right now. This is really only for someone who is both heavily invested in the Android platform and needs a tablet at this moment. For other Android fans, you should really wait for the second generation Android tablets with tablet optimized software. That means Android 3.0 Honeycomb. For Tested, I'm Norm. See you next time.